Hey everybody, it's Richard Roland here. Um, I wanted to make a weekly development diaries as part of my preparation for publication of a new tabletop role-playing game that I've been working on, um, Amboria Role-Playing in the World Under Starlight, which is going to be coming to a Kickstarter near you from a publisher called Strange Owl Games very soon, in just a few weeks actually. Um, and so anyway, my intent had been that I would make weekly uh, development diaries. That did not happen. Um, basically due to uh, a series of uh, difficult life events, nothing really bad, although some health difficulties, but nothing really bad, but um, uh, it was just really impossible to do any more than just sort of the bare minimum to uh, try to stay up on some of these projects. So. That being said, I'm kind of coming out the other end of that period, and I want to start making some new content. Um, I want to do some collaboration videos with some other people, both sort of symbolic world type stuff, and also stuff specifically around my interest of the tabletop hobby, um, storytelling in general, and actually uh, the tabletop hobby, hobby as a means for exploring some of these, let's say, symbolic world related themes, universal history, stuff like that. Um, I've also uh, gotten into... Um, miniature wargaming a little bit um been painting up some armies um here you can see here you can see uh, uh some oathmark elves that i am currently they're currently in progress they look pretty rad you know for uh for somebody who's not done a lot of painting before anyway they're still in progress but um so i've been doing uh, uh painting up some armies for oathmark and for a really cool ancient world skirmish game called spqr so I might do some videos talking about that and why I'm interested in that and why it's fun to me. Um, and I'm also hoping to do some collaboration videos with some really cool people. I thought today's video though would be uh, just a quick response video to um, a guy that I consider a friend. Um, certainly, you know, we, we've only had a few interactions, let's say online, but they've all been pleasant. But uh, definitely somebody who I see as being, those of you who watch me other places know that I'm doing the look to see if I have the book right next to my desk. I don't, it's over there. But somebody whose uh, work works on tabletop role-playing games have been a huge influence on me, and that is uh, Alexander Mac uh, Macri over at Ar Arbiter of Worlds. Um, Macris, I think. Anyway, yeah, so Alexander over at Arbiter of Worlds has been doing a series of pretty cool videos which have basically just been, um, uh, I say just, but I mean, they've basically been kind of uh, the greatest hits of, of the content from his fantastic book, Arbiter of Worlds, which I love, I've read and reread, and I've even actually used to teach uh, a class on how to be a complete dungeon master at a university, believe it or not. So, um, uh, he's been doing a, a good series of videos on this, and uh, he recently did a video about the dreaded F word. Yes, that's right, folks. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it right here on the air. Fudge. Fudging the dice and whether or not you should do it. Um, so I wanted to share a little bit about my own strategy uh, or, or, or beliefs uh, when it comes to this question. And then actually also I wanted to... Um, I wanted to share with you, uh, as a kind of an extension of that, uh, what I mean when I say that, uh, for instance, something like uh, tabletop role-playing games are a collaborative storytelling experience. Because what I mean by that may not be what you think I mean by that. But first, this video is brought to you by, well, by me. Um, in all seriousness, uh, there is now a Kickstarter landing page up for our uh, our Kickstarter project, Emboria, uh, role-playing in the world under starlight. This is a game that I've been working on in some fashion or other for about the last five or six years, and that the, the setting that it's set in is actually something I've been working on for about the last 20 years. So I'm really excited to bring it to you. And, um, you know, obviously we hope the Kickstarter does well because there's a lot of Emboria and you're not going to get it all here in the first wave. But um, uh, so just to tell you what's in the Kickstarter real quick, um, there's going to be a core book, which includes a trilogy of pretty great adventures. Um, and what I like about the adventures, they're a little more, let's say, railroady than the first one is anyway. 
a little more railroady than the kind of adventure I would typically typically write, and that's because the adventure is intended to teach the game master and the players that we call the game master, dungeon master, lore masters, we call them in this game, to teach the lore master and the players about the world and sort of how things work, you know, socially, religiously, spiritually, um, uh, metaphysically, um, historically, on all those different levels, uh, how things work, and then from there things open out. So, uh, but that being said, um, it also comes with a, a complete sandbox campaign called Thunder in the North. And basically, this book is going to be where you see all of all of those cool design uh, mechanisms and those design principles that I picked up from reading Arbiter of, the Wor uh, Arbiter of Worlds and running sandbox campaigns for years and years and years are going to be kind of distilled into this book. So I'm very excited about that. We're going to do a lot more videos about this content, uh, about, about these things later. But the main thing I want you to know is that there's a landing page on Kickstarter for the project, even if you don't plan you know you're not sure you want to back the project or you don't know well what about the system is the system going to be one i enjoy all that different stuff i'm going to explain all of that in time and obviously there's going to be a lot more information coming out if you want to kind of get on board though at least to just kind of pay attention to the project you can do two things which i would massively appreciate the first thing is there will be a link down in the doobly doo as uh, as matt uh, colville says uh, there will be a link down in the doobly-doo to the um, to the Kickstarter landing page. And there's a, a little button there that says something like, notify me when this project launches. If you could go there and just click that button, that would be massively helpful to me for two reasons. One is um, it'll make sure that you know when the project launches, uh, which might be cool for you. Maybe it'll be something that you like. The other reason is that obviously this helps the helps us with the Kickstarter sort of algorithm. Kickstarter will favor the project. It'll show it to more people if it thinks people are interested in it. So if you are interested in it, go click the button. If you're not interested in it, don't click the button. I mean, just be honest. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> okay. The other thing you can do if you want uh, to get a sneak preview of everything at this point, basically uh, the system, the setting, uh, pre-gen characters, uh, solo, a really cool solo adventure, um, and um, actually just a whole starting adventure. Like if you want all that stuff, you can go subscribe to the Strange All Patreon and download it today. So uh, I'll put a link for that in the doobly do as well. All right, so on to the question of fudging. I don't want to uh, just, just you know, like you should go over and you should watch Arbiter of Worlds. Uh, you should watch their video. Uh, his video because it, it it'll basically give you um, the overview of what he calls this one and the 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 last uh, the last video he did which I think dropped about nine days ago from when I'm recording this a uh, really good video called it's not the GM's job to make sure that everyone has fun okay and uh, this is a really important concept and if you uh, honestly it's a really freeing concept um, Alexander talks about what he calls the agency theory of fun and to basically lay it out the idea is that um, fun, which is a very nebulous kind of a sketchy goal anyway, um, but uh, let's say fun is is sort of best defined as that feeling for me of deep satisfaction when I accomplish something, when I and my friends together we accomplish something that are and our choices are meaningful. We make a meaningful impact upon the world of uh, you know that the, that we're playing it. That's what makes a game fun to me. If we're just goofing off, but nothing really happens, right? At the end of the day, I don't feel like my choices really mattered. My character could or could have been there or not, and it wouldn't have changed the outcome. To me, that's not fun. I probably won't keep playing in that game, right? So this is the what. So Alexander calls this the agency theory of fun. Two pretty good videos on that and fudging the dice. You should go watch. Um, I'll just say when it comes to fudging, don't, I don't. I don't do it. Um, I've been tempted to pretty much, pretty much every time a character has died at my table, I have been tempted to fudge the dice to uh, to prevent it because I can see the light starting to go out of the player's eyes. And yet, and every time, when I don't do that, man, I'm thinking of some stories. Um, I was running a supers game. I was running a supers game. And... Uh, uh, it was for just two players. 
Um, I love supers games, and I really love like one on one or like one on two uh, tabletop role playing. Very fun, very fulfilling. It's really immersive because you're just focused on one or two people. So I was running the supers game, and we had just two players, and one of the players had a um, a love interest, a love interest who was actually the DA of the city that they were operating as heroes. And over the course of the events of the game, that NPC, the the love interest, the DA, uh, was shot and killed. Now, I didn't decide the DA was going to be shot and killed, but the bad guys, like I decided the bad guys were trying to assassinate the DA for, well, reasons, right? Uh, and the players knew about this and they're trying to thwart the plan and everything. Well, things don't go the way that the players are hoping it's going to go. And this character, this beloved NPC, gets shot and killed. Now, I could see this is really going to upset the player, um, who was very invested in her character and very invested in what was going on and very invested in the setting. And they put all this work into trying to stop this assassination. And they had failed. And in moments like that, I do have, I always have because, you know, um, I try to I try to be a compassionate person. Um, when I see somebody, you know, about to about to get really upset about an outcome, there's always a little part of me that says, "Why don't you just put a finger on the scale, right?" Um, but I didn't, and so we got to sort of play out that character watching her fiance, you know, die in her arms, and it it was rough. Um, this is one of the few times in my game mastery career that I wondered, did I go too far? Uh, the player actually had had to leave the table, had to go to the bathroom and cry it out. Um, this might sound really silly if uh, if you didn't know that the person in, partic in question is an amazing player, is always super invested, no matter what character she's playing. And, um, you know, the, but, but that that emotional, you know, impact that's part of the investment. Um, she came back to the table 10 minutes later with steely resolve in her eyes. And what I watched happen over the next four hours is truly one of the greatest, um, let's say, uh, examples of detective work in a tabletop RPG. It was not because I had set up a detective adventure and I had laid out clues and I had sort of planned it out and the players were just kind of coming along for the ride. It was because the players were angry. They weren't angry at me. They were angry at the bad guys. And their anger focused them. And they got something done. And when it was over, in my mind, it's still one of the greatest sessions that I've ever run. Nothing that happened in that session was something I'd planned to happen ahead of time. I was simply trying to run the world to respond to the player's actions in ways that were realistic. And of course, we're rolling dice. When you fudge dice, in my opinion, you deprive your players of sessions like that. It doesn't mean every session is going to be like that. But when you fudge the dice, when you put your finger on the scales, you deprive them of the ability of the opportunity to really accomplish something and to get to the end of it and feel like, I did this. I accomplished this. I earned this. Um, this kind of brings me to one other thing I wanted to say as kind of a response to Arbiter of Worlds, uh, uh, his last two videos. And that is um, what I mean when I say, as I frequently do, when I introduce new people to hobby, which is all the time, um, you know, um, probably dozens of people a year, right? Um, when I introduce new people to the hobby, which is pretty much all the time, um, I, when I sit them down and I try to explain, here's what we're about to do, because they're like, well, what is this RPG thing, right? What's this D&D &D thing? What are, we, what are we talking about? Um, and um, one of the thing, ways that I will describe it is I will say this is a collaborative storytelling experience. What I do not mean by that is you're going to come to the table with your backstory, and I'm going to come to the table with a fully fleshed out, you know, episode, episodic, you know, series of adventures that's going to get you from point A to point B with a tremendous climax that everything is supposed to wind up to. And I planned everything out to the T. What I say is a collaborative storytelling experience. 
What I mean is that the story is what happens after the dice are rolled. Right? You try things, I'll try things, we'll roll some dice, and when it's all said and done, the story will be what happened at the table and how we responded to things and how we reacted to things. And if it was a good story, it'll tell and honestly probably grow a little bit in the telling over the years as it gets passed around the gaming group. When I say tabletop role-playing games are a collaborative storytelling experience, that's what I mean. The story is what happens after the dice are rolled, not the thing that we bring to the table ahead of time and we try to force the dice to kind of fit. If that's your approach, then don't we don't even really need the dice. Like, what are we doing at this point? Like, why does it matter, right, that we're rolling these things? If you want that, um, you know, that natural 20, um, or you want that um, natural one, or, or like, whatever, like, if you want that roll to mean something, then the outcome outcomes simply can't be predetermined. So um, I try to run games that are very open-ended. I try to run games in which it is my job as the GM to simply move the parts around based on what is realistic and what uh, maintains immersion, right? Um, I'm going to do another video about that and about the job of the game master or the dungeon master in actually... Um, let's say limiting character options, limiting player options as a way of sort of maintaining immersion in the world. But um, that is, that's another video for another time. So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been a little rambly. Part of why I haven't done any videos is because I really got in my head about it and it felt like it was this huge thing. And if I don't have, you know, I don't have, um, you know, if I don't have a script or I don't have like a cool title or background music or or like or like fancy video editing software, all this different stuff. Um, well, I decided basically that's dumb and this is a cool thing. And I'm glad that Alexander is making these videos and I thought I'd do a response to them. If you enjoyed this, I would love to hear from you in the comments. Please check out all those links in the doobly-doo. Um, check out uh, Alexander's channel, which I'll also link to here. And that's it. Christos Anesti.